From advocacy to education, from research assistance to career support, the American Society of Human Genetics brings unparalleled benefits and opportunities to the thousands of its members, and we are bringing it all straight to you. This is ASHG TV. Welcome back to Denver and to ASHG 2024. I'm Atria Godfrey. As we all come together in a snowy Colorado, today we are highlighting the ways that the ASHG is helping you take your career to the next level. Straight ahead, whether kicking off your career in genetics or wanting to take it to the next level, the ASHG Fellowship Program has something for everyone. Think about what you're really passionate about, what you really enjoy doing. Think about the types of skills that you want to build for your future career. And while this annual meeting is the premier global gathering, the ASHG keeps you covered year-round with online offerings. We'll dive into the digital options that are at your disposal. Plus, our DEI Task Force Chair sits down in studio to discuss where we're seeing progress in making the benefits of genetics research reach people everywhere. We are continuing the efforts, like I mentioned, the Human Genetics Scholars Initiative, which targets underrepresented groups to participate in genetics and genomics research and give them visibility, like here at the annual meeting. And speaking of equity and inclusion, today our travels take us to Xavier University of Louisiana, where they are breaking barriers by championing diversity in genetic counseling. It's a must-see stop on our tour today. From here in the Convention Center to your computer, ASHG TV is everywhere at your fingertips. You can find the latest ASHG TV episode airing on the TVs here in the Convention Center, on the in-house channels at our local partner hotels, on the homepage of the ASHG Meeting website, and on our social media channels, so make sure you like and subscribe to get all the ASHG TV content right at your fingertips. The new Genomics and Public Service Fellowship Program recognizes the importance of diverse career paths to inform and advance genomics and its applications. The program provides training and career development in public policy, education, and engagement, science communications, and scientific administration. Take a look now as we follow up with some fellows. My name is Cameron Washington, and I'm part of the inaugural Genomics and Public Service Fellowship Program, and I'm the 2024 to 2026 Genetics Education and Engagement Fellow. My name is Jacqueline Cohen, and I am the 2024 to 2025 ASHG NHGRI Genomics Communications Fellow. My name is Elizabeth Roy. I am the current Genetics and Public Policy Fellow. Yeah, this fellowship was attractive for a couple of different reasons. So I'll take you back to fourth grade Cameron who wanted so desperately to be a teacher. Um, I loved my educators at that time and wanted to be like them as role models. Um, and so that led me to become a genetic counselor where I was still able to use my education skills, but then also my growing interest in genetics. And it was there in genetic counseling training programs that I realized that there was a need for education in different types of settings. So education at breweries where we learn about yeast genetics, for example, museums and zoos where we learn about animal genetics, or even libraries where you attach genealogy to family history. Uh, those types of things really brought me to be in this experience and learn from professionals that can actually help me get to that point. I really am passionate about communicating genomics information in a way that will really impact the way that both the public and the healthcare communities can perceive and use this information. Um, and I felt that the fellowship was just a really exciting opportunity to work in the field that I'm passionate about, as well as continue to build upon my existing skills and knowledge within science communication. What was most of attractive to me about this fellowship was the three rotations and the opportunity to gain experience it, across federal government, advocacy, and Hill experience. In terms of my career goals, I live at the intersection of multiple different cultures and identities. I'm from South Carolina. I'm the first in my family to complete college, um, and also the first in my family to be a, a scientist or a doctor. And so I find that my professional uh, career is probably gonna follow a similar intersection at healthcare, research, and education. My long-term career goals are to hopefully uh, one day lead an organization, whether it be government organization, private, nonprofit, um, something that really uh, helps bring awareness to um, uh, important genomics research 
and um, really innovative genomic technologies that are coming up out. My long-term career goals are to stay in the uh, federal government, state government, or move into the advocacy space, um, trying to figure out how to balance my personal uh, role in what advocacy looks like with professional. My advice to anybody considering becoming an education and engagement fellow is to do your homework and do your research. There's so much information on the website with ASHG and with NHGRI um, that you'll be able to figure out what things will make you stand out and make you a more qualified candidate. A fellowship is just a really great way to gain experience, um, to gain new knowledge and new skills. And um, I would say that Think about what you're really passionate about, what you really enjoy doing. Think about the types of skills that you want to build for your future career. My advice to someone considering applying, be yourself. You know, where you're interested in applying for the fellowship because you care about the space, show that. Um, and get a second opinion on your cover letter and resume. Doesn't hurt to practice for your interview either. Most of the illnesses that afflict humanity today are the result of chronic degenerative conditions. Chronic degenerative conditions provide a much wider challenge, and I think that we will not answer those problems at the level that we need if we do not understand the genetic differences that bring those about in the form that we're seeing them today. Origin, or Project Origen, is a groundbreaking initiative led by Tech Salud at Tech de Monterrey where we aim to contribute to the global scientific community by uncovering the genetic factors behind those diseases. What I hope to see from Project Origen is the possibility of precision medicine and knowing the genetic profiles for these diseases can help us do better precision medicine and even do better preventive interventions in the population that is exposed to risk or have some traits or have some genetic characteristics that we don't necessarily know from populations from Latin America and Mexico because of the lack of research in these populations right now. The Digital Learning Committee is tasked with maintaining an ongoing year-round professional education program that allows members to keep up with emerging findings. So how do they do that? Dr. Elijah Robertson explains. Well, I think in the beginning we weren't quite sure what we needed, and so we are still experimenting with all the different formats. I think that what people have found popular are the, the online offerings for webinars and for workshops where they can do it essentially at their own pace and on their own time. Well, the, the webinars and workshops are some of the big ones. We also do journal clubs every month for papers that are published in the American Journal of Human Genetics and Human Genetics and Genomics Advances. There's also a podcast that the Digital Learning Committee has run for a couple of years. It's called Genetically speaking, covers more of the people involved in the science, the background of how things are going. And we're hoping for the future in 2025 to have a spring online symposium that will be on one specific topic, but we don't have all the details nailed down yet. We have to consider what's happening at the annual meeting and also the content that we've given in the last year or two, because we don't want to keep repeating the same topics. Even something that's relatively popular, people are going to tire out if you have it on too much of the program. It's grown over time. We have a pretty high conversion rate. Usually we can have attendees signing up in the hundreds of things are popular and close to that of people watching. Um, we would have to go back and look and see what people are actually watching it not at time. That's just the people that are actually involved while it's actually going on. But if someone finds an interesting topic, they can go back and rewatch it or recommend it to another member so that they can go watch it even if they missed it the first time. It's hard because science is a constantly moving target, right? So we have to look at what's going on at the annual meeting and the attendance at all these virtual events and see what is the best attended, look at the calendar, what's on the meeting, what's happened in the last few years on the digital calendar, and then figure out are there new emerging areas. So we have to pay attention to popular papers, popular topics here at the meeting that people are going to see, and also what are the best attended digital events because maybe that's a new emerging area that we need to have some more data on before we saturate people too much. I would just say look on the ASHG website for the learning center and hopefully it'll help you navigate to resources that you want to find. And if you're not finding what you want, then definitely let us know because we're very interested in offering new digital ways to consume content and also new topic areas is all the time. The 
The FinGen project is a public-private partnership where we have 24 partners, 13 pharma and 11 Finnish partners who together have constructed a data set of 520,000 Finns and their over 50 years healthcare information and their genomic genotype information, up to 21 million variants. What is unique about the FinGen project is its utilization of the Nordic health register system. This, when combined with the population structure, the largest population isolated in Europe, uh, provides a very unique setting for genetic discoveries. The major findings in FinGen um, are the uh, overwhelming number of 20,000 genome-wide association analysis hits that we have identified when we have analyzed the half a million. In FinGen, we believe that no biobank project alone can transform the genetics. We need to combine the results with other research projects, smaller and larger, and by only doing that, we can uh, make the difference in genetic research. ASHG envisions a world in which people everywhere realize the benefits of genetics and genomics research, and diversity, equity, and inclusion is imperative to that mission. DEI Task Force Chair Athena Starlard Davenport is here in studio now with more on the action plan to make that goal a reality. Pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. This current plan that we're discussing was actually created back in 2021 yes. with initiatives that impact not only ASHG but also research development. What have we already accomplished on that action plan? So, no, that's a great question. So over the past uh, five years, uh, the society has championed diversity and equity and inclusion in genetics and genomics research and in the workforce. And some of the initiatives that we have accomplished include the Facing Our History, Building an Equitable Future initiative, as well as the Human Genetics and Genomics Workforce Report and the Human Genetics Scholars Initiative, which I'm proud to say I was a part of the very first cohort. And it's a great opportunity for underrepresented groups groups uh, to participate in and get engaged in uh, research and in the workforce and to develop the pipeline for researchers, underrepresented groups in genetics and genomics research. So you've already accomplished a lot in a short amount of time. Where are your efforts now? What are we focusing on today? So our efforts still remain the same, but we want to emphasize those same action plans and strategic areas that we previously talked about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so some of those things include acknowledging the history of indiscretions and in injustices in genetics and genomics research, um, particularly as it relates to eugenics and racism and other type of injustices. We also want to emphasize the pipeline or increasing engagement of underrepresented groups defined by the NI National Institute of Health as being underrepresented in genetics and genomics research so we can create a pipeline for them in the workforce. We also want to engage and increase uh, research participation among underrepresented groups in those areas as well. So, so those are some of the things and we just want to emphasize that and make that a high priority. You've mentioned it a couple of times but you know making sure that every group is represented yes. when it it comes to genetic research is so important, it's Absolutely. paramount. How are we doing when it comes to making sure that those underrepresented groups are represented when it comes to research and what are some of the specific efforts to still you know kind of make that a priority we are continuing the efforts like i mentioned the human genetic scholars initiative which targets underrepresented groups to participate in genetics and genomics research and give them visibility like here at the annual meeting there's different um, opportunities and uh, things that are going on um, at the meeting, including like a d diversity, equity, and inclusion luncheon and okay. reception and a human genetics scholars. But we're also trying to implement possibly a me to advance mentorship, like a legacy, uh, it's called our Legacy uh, Scholars Program to provide mentorship among established PIs to give underrepresented groups more uh, mentorship in those areas and we also want to provide potential uh, strategies for increasing minorities to the annual meeting mm -hmm. by providing possibly minority travel awards uh, oh. at travel awards uh, to minorities that go to or underrepresented groups that are at uh, historically back colleges and universities. Well you're doing a wonderful job. Congratulations on all the progress that you made and we look forward to more success in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.
genetics or genomics team is important because medicine is evolving. But in medicine today, we're developing precision medicine, or some people call it personalized medicine. What we were missing in Louisiana is we don't have a genetic counseling program in the state of Louisiana. So the partnership with Xavier to start the first genetic counseling program in Louisiana is very exciting. There's minimal amount of genetic counselors for minority populations to serve as clinical supervisors, program faculty, and leadership. I really saw this as an amazing opportunity um, to contribute to something meaningful. And being the only accredited genetic counseling program at a historically black college and university is quite meaningful. We're going to be creating a really safe and welcoming learning environment for all comers. And if we're successful, I get very excited at the prospect of infusing diversity into the profession and hopefully making a significant and lasting impression on the field. And with that, it is time to say goodbye on this second day. It's been a great day showcasing so many of the ways that the ASHG is all about helping you and your career goals. Remember, if you missed any portion of today's program, you can find the latest ASHG TV episode airing on the TVs here in the Convention Center, on the in-house channels at our local partner hotels, on the homepage of the ASHG Meeting website, and on our social media channels. So make sure you like and subscribe to get all the ASHG TV content right at your fingertips. Be sure to tune in tomorrow to ASHG TV where we will be showcasing how industry partnerships and advocacy efforts are both working to make the genetics community stronger. Until then, have a great day.